let's go on a treasure hunt. Would you believe I have gold hiding all over the place on this farm? Would you believe you have gold hidden in your backyard? Or that there was gold above my head in the sky yesterday? Well, guess what? There is. And in a lot more places than that. But I ain't talking about that metal, that worthless stuff that we make our jewelry out of. I'm talking about the golden ratio. We find the golden ratio in flowers, in the fruit we grow. And once you understand where to look, you'll spot the golden ratio just about everywhere in your day-to-day -day life. Come on the shade house and I'll explain what the golden ratio is. And then we'll go on a little treasure hunt around the farm. We all know what a ratio is. It's a comparison of one number to another. One over two is the ratio we know as one half. We work with ratios all the time. You use X units of soil to Y units of perlite, for example. You mix your chemicals and your concoctions to a ratio, right? X ounces of chemical to Y ounces of water. Just like the ratio a half is the number one over the number two, or a fourth is the number one over the number four, or three fifths is the number three over the number five, the golden ratio is one number over another number. But those two numbers are very special. They are sequential members of the Fibonacci sequence. The Fibonacci sequence is a sequence of numbers that starts with the number one. And the next number is calculated by adding the two previous numbers. So one plus nothing is one. One plus one is two. One plus two is three, two plus three is five, three plus five is eight, 13, 21, 34, 55, and so on. And the golden ratio is found by taking any Fibonacci number and putting it over the number before it in the Fibonacci sequence. So 55 over 34 approximately equals the golden ratio. 34 over 21 approximately equals the golden ratio. All the way out to infinity and all the way back to one. And the approximate value of the golden ratio is 1.618 and these dots mean that this number really never stops. It's a repeating decimal that just keeps going on and on and on. But for the purposes of today's discussion, we're going to stay with 1.618. Now, here's the really cool part. The numbers from the Fibonacci sequence surround us in nature. For example, the petals on a flower are always a Fibonacci number. You don't believe me? Let's count the petals on this orchid and see if it holds true. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There are eight petals on this orchid. Hmm, let's see. Oh, look at that, eight. Eight is a member of the Fibonacci sequence. If you counted the petals on this sunflower, you would also land on a Fibonacci number. Don't believe me? Go out in your backyard and test it right now. While you're out in your backyard counting petals, find something that has leaves and count how many leaves come off of each stem. For example, this little avocado tree right here. I've got a unique stem sprouting right here at this Y. Let's count the leaves. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right, so that's eight. Let's look at the stem right next to it. One, two, three, four, five. And let's look at the stem just below those. One, two. So what were the numbers? Eight, we already established eight is a Fibonacci number. The other stem had five. Well, what do you know? And the new stem that was growing? Two, also a Fibonacci number. Another place you see Fibonacci numbers every day and you don't know about it is in the trunk of a tree. Trees grow according to the Fibonacci sequence. We start out with a trunk or a stem. And that's one. Remember, one is a Fibonacci number. That one stem always sprouts out two new branches. Two is a Fibonacci number. Two 
plus one is three. One, two, three. Three is a Fibonacci number. Now here's where it gets really interesting. Of those two branches, one always stays dormant for a little while. The other splits into two. So here we go again. One, two, three, four, five. Five is a Fibonacci number. And that pattern continues as the tree grows. Yes, this is a banana in my pocket. And let's check it out and see if we could find a Fibonacci number. I don't know, let's count the sides. I'll mark the first side with this piece of electrical tape. There's one, two, three, four, five. Ding, 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 Fibonacci number. The number of sides on a banana will always be a Fibonacci number. Join me in the pineapple grove. This is a pineapple, but you already knew that. This is the plant the pineapple comes from. I imagine if you started counting these leaves, you'd probably land at a Fibonacci number. But I'm guessing you probably never took a really close look at the skin of a pineapple. A pineapple is made up of a series of these little hexagonal scales, hexagonal, hexagonal, six-sided scales. At first glance, the scales appear random, but when you take a closer look, they're not. They actually follow a spiral pattern around the pineapple. Let me use tape to illustrate. Here's the first row of spiral. Then I'm gonna skip a row and tape the next row. Now that you've seen it, you can't unsee it. These scales grow in a spiral pattern. You wanna know the name of that spiral? It's called the golden spiral. And remember the golden ratio, 1.618. You can pick any one of these scales and turn the pineapple 1.618 degrees and you'll find a corresponding scale. Now I know that's true for pineapples. I'm not sure if it's 100% sure for the way bunches of bananas grow on a stem, but it looks very, very close. But if you look at this bunch of bananas, it looks to me like the first bunch starts here. Then if you go around this stem first one time, right? So back to the beginning, and then a little bit more than half, which would be the 0.618 part, right? That's the start of the next bunch. And then if you were to go around again, and a little bit past half, you would get to the start of the third bunch. And that pattern appears to repeat itself all the way up the bunch. Pineapples and bananas aren't the only place we see the golden spiral in nature. Sunflowers lay out their seed pattern in a series of golden spirals. Now it might be hard to see on this video, but if you can get your hands on a sunflower and look at it yourself, this isn't just a random bunch of seeds. It actually takes on a spiral pattern. And remember earlier, I said I had gold up above my head. The outer bands of Hurricane Elsa passed right over my head yesterday. And a hurricane happens to be a big giant spiral whose width increases by a factor of five for every quarter turn. Guess what other spiral's width increases by a factor of five for every quarter turn? The golden spiral. Now you're ready to find some gold of your own. And it ain't just in the backyard. Architects, artists, designers have known for centuries that people find the golden ratio pleasing. You'll see examples in buildings around town. You'll see examples in your favorite artwork. And you know who loves the golden ratio? Graphic designers. You will see it in marketing materials all over the place. Now, I don't know if my graphic designer used the golden ratio when she put together the Sleepy Lizard logo, but I do know that a lot of people find it pleasing to the eye. And if you're one of those people and you want one of these t-shirts, go to guacfarm.com, G-U-A-C-F-A-R-M.com. We got our t-shirts out there, we got our stickers, and between the months of September and January, we also sell avocados. Now I gotta run, get my cameraman off to football practice. So while I do that, you go out to guacfarm.com and I will see you on the next video.